Hi, Gary Stearman time for another Prophecy in the News daily update. Uh, this is being recorded on Friday the 27th, and you're in for a treat because in studio with me is author Tom Horn. Hi, Tom. Hi, Gary. Great to be here again. And a gentleman you've never met, but you're going to enjoy hearing from him. His name's Chris Putnam, and uh, Chris, welcome to Prophecy in the News. Thank you. It's an honor to be here, Gary. They have worked together, and they have come up with this book and you're going to be hearing a lot about this book in the near future. In fact, starting right now, Petrus Romanus, the final pope. Tell us about that, Tom. Yeah, Gary, and first of all, let me preface this by saying it is not hype to say that this is the most important research I've ever personally been involved uh, in, and the prophetic implications of it uh, could be beyond um, any kind of hype that I'd be able to add to that anyway. It does use a famous Catholic prophecy that's simply called the prophecy of the popes. People can look it up on Wikipedia if they want to know more about that. But what makes this prophecy important is that um, given almost 900 years ago, 1139 or approximately 900 years ago, uh, was published out of the secret archives of the Vatican, right? Brought out and put into a book called Lignum Vitae, over 400 years ago. But what does this prophecy do? What does it say? Well, it tells us every pope that would exist from the time of Malachi o Morgair, so Celestine II, down to the final pope who it names Petrus Romanus, Peter the Roman. And why this pope is important is because according to the Catholic prophecy, this will be the false prophet of end times fame who will help give rise to the Antichrist. Now, Tom, in the process of putting this idea together, you became uh, connected uh, with, with Chris here in, in a way that you describe as almost supernatural. Right. You, you, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I, I knew Chris. I had respect for him already. I had already referred to him in other uh, publications and writings as an apologist and a theologian, uh, a very solid individual. Uh, but I happened to be speaking at a conference in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and I was sharing with my staff how that I was amazed that nobody had written how that the very next pope following Benedict XVI would be the final pope on a 900-year-old Catholic prophecy. I was amazed nobody was writing about it. I was thinking about writing about it. And I went into my um, hotel room to check my email, and I had an email uh, from Chris Putnam, of all people, asking me about the prophecy of the popes. And we had not discussed this. One thing led to the other. I'm glad that God put Chris Putnam in my path because this guy is not only a theologian, he is a bloodhound. And the chapter that he writes in this book on a fellow by the name of Rene Thibault, I'll let him tell you about it, that actually connects the coming of Petrus Romanus with the year 2012. That's worth the price of the ticket right well, there. Well, Chris, I am looking at page 31 here, and, and there's a, a book titled The Mysterious Prophecy of the Popes, the author Rene Thibault. And you uh, came across this, and it, it, it opened a certain lock that enabled you to make some connections. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when we started out to write this book, 2012 was not really on the radar at all. And it, I was into the research, and I had been reading a lot of the criticisms from various Jesuits and, and reading their bibliographies of books that had been written about the prophecy. A lot of these come out of Europe or in Italian and French. And mm -hmm. I found a book by a, a Belgian Jesuit and university professor, Rene Thibault, and uh, he believed in the prophecy. Now, he, he is one of, the, one of the Jesuits that actually thought it was authentic, and uh, he, he makes a lot of good arguments for it. But the, one of the really interesting things that came out of his book is that he found the year 2012 as the final year of the Pope in more than one calculation, in like five or six different anagrams and encryption codes in the Latin text of the prophecy. He, he detected the year 2012. And the thing that makes that really compelling is that he wrote his book in 1951, then he died in 1952. 2012 wasn't on the radar. There was no hype about the Mayan calendar or any of those things when he wrote this. And he unequivocally predicted the final pope in 2012 based on the Malachi prophecy. And that's not all. You found a number of other writers, Christian writers in the past, preachers, uh, Bible teachers, who connected this time in which we live right now with some major amazing events. 
and it almost raises the hair on the back of your hands to think about all these things coming together in, in the year 2012. Up to now, it's been the Mayan prophecy, that the Mayan prophecy this, the Mayan prophecy that. This makes that look like nothing at all, I think, in my opinion. That's true. You know, I, I looked at some of the, the beliefs of the, of the reformers and, and some of the people that held the historicist view of the book of Revelation. Well, the thing that's interesting is that it's all based on when you start the date of a certain sequence of time. And there's prominent Presbyterian pastors in the United States at the turn, turn of the 20th century that believed that the final year was 2012 based on the historicist prep, uh, interpretation. Jonathan Edwards, one of the calculations that, that he used, lands us right in the, in the time that we're in now. And so it's not just a Catholic prophecy, it's even the reformers calculations based on certain interpretations land you right in the same period of time. Well, you know, I, I have been a pastor and I know you've been a pastor, Tom, for many, many years. And, and we have said the words, Jesus is coming soon. I'm sure that from the pulpit you've proclaimed that. And that, you don't say that sort of thing lightly. If you didn't think it was true, you wouldn't say Jesus is coming soon. I believe Jesus is coming soon. We're living in the time. And when something like Petrus Romanus comes along and reminds us about how quickly the clock is moving, that's exciting. It is exciting. And I think people, once they've read this book, they're going to understand why I've been saying publicly something that I have never said before about any book that I've written, including best-selling books, and that is that this is without doubt the most important research I ever personally have been involved with because, uh, in fact, I can tell you that when Chris Putnam and I were doing the research, there were two or three times we stopped in our tracks. Stuff started falling in our laps from dusty corridors inside universities, lost books, all the way to Dane County, Wisconsin, and the murder of Edward Coons. I mean, people are going to read about stuff in here that they haven't read anywhere else. And when you put the math together behind the probability that this is all chance, it becomes, uh, well, let's just say you have to be living on another planet not to know that there is something going on and it smells supernatural. Oh, yes. Speaking of lost books, I'm holding a uh, CD-ROM here that has uh, a number of book titles on it, uh, research books, some books difficult to get, some almost impossible or actually impossible. How many books are on this CD? Well, on? there are 122 files. What you have to remember is that some of those files are whole libraries. Wow. There's over 20,000 pages of libraries on this uh, data DVD. There's audio files, there's movies, there's something like eight hours of radio shows on there. It's just uh, what we wanted to do was we knew that this, the conclusions of this book are so fantastic that we didn't just want people's hair standing on their end, we wanted them to have the research <laughs> material so they can investigate whether we're telling the truth. And well, this way they'll be able to do it. What can I say except buy the book? We're <laughs> offering it for 1995, a company absolutely free. You get this Petrus Romanus CD-ROM with all those publications, audios, videos on it to, uh, for uh, your own personal research, 1995. And by the way, if you'd like uh, to put this together as a package with a year's subscription to Prophecy in the News, uh, the whole package, 42.95 plus shipping and handling. Uh, to me, that's an excellent deal. And, but, but, but what I really want you to pay attention to is this book, Petrus Romanus. This book is going to make waves, I guarantee you, in the next two, three, four months. Uh, you're going to be hearing about this book uh, in a lot of different ways and through a lot of different media, and I invite you to get uh, your copy right now so you'll be ahead of the curve. Right, Tom? Yeah, and the fact that you're giving that DVD away free with the book, just that it's normal retail, is the, probably the best deal I've ever seen. If a person tried to go out and collect all of those files on their own, buy them individually, there's Kindle books on there, oh, uh, yeah, it would oh, be yeah. hundreds and hundreds of dollars, and it's all there free. Well, what can I say? I mean, I think you've said it all. And Chris, thanks for being with us today. Uh, always nice to meet a fellow researcher into Bible truth. And I, I've heard from Tom, and I believe, Tom, you're one of those people who really likes to dig into the Scriptures, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's the Word of life. It, it is. And, uh, and may the Lord uh, speed your work to come, and I, I can't wait to see what you're going to be doing next.
Thank you very much. Tom, thanks a lot. Great to be here, Gary. Jesus is coming soon. So keep looking up. <laughs>